This presentation recaps GCSE ideas about electron shell filling and then introduces A-level ideas about orbitals, subshells and shells. By the end of the presentation, you ought to be able to say how many electrons can fit into an orbital. You ought to be able to say how orbitals are arranged into subshells and talk about four different types of subshell, S, P, D and F. And you ought to say how different shells are made up of subshells. Let's take a moment to look back to your GCSE studies. You'd obviously have talked about um, shells of electrons at GCSE and you were probably introduced to the kind of following system. So first shell, two electrons, second shell, eight electrons, third shell, eight electrons, and then fourth shell uh, probably wasn't actually discussed how many electrons uh, went into there. So um, you'd have been asked to do things like sodium with 11 electrons. What would that have been? See if you can remember. And 281 would be the way you'd have arranged those electrons. Calcium with 20 electrons. What would that have been? 2882 uh, to spread those 20 electrons uh, across the shells. Now that's probably as far as you'd have gone at GCSE. Uh, so if we take an element like iron with 26 electrons, how would we write the arrangement of the electrons for that? Well, it turns out in reality that it's 2814 So the GCSE ideas of 288 and then the rest uh, don't really apply beyond calcium. Before we head into the detail of this topic, and there is quite a bit of detail, let's just take a look at our destination. Uh, so at A level, uh, you're going to need to be able to write uh, detailed electronic configurations. So a substance such as iron, we said in the simple arrangement 2814-2. Uh, actually, you're going to need to be able to write things like this and draw diagrams like this. So let's dive in now to the detail that you need to understand for AS chemistry about electronic configuration. We'll start with the fact that in an atom, uh, electrons are arranged into things called orbitals. Now orbitals can hold up to two electrons each, so you can have zero, one or two electrons in an orbital, but no more. Now orbitals are then arranged in things called subshells. And there's various types of subshell, there's four that you need to know about, and those uh, vary depending on how many orbitals they contain. We'll start with the S subshell. An S subshell uh, consists of just one orbital, and since orbitals can hold up to two electrons each, that means an S subshell can hold up to two electrons. Next on our list is the P subshell. A P subshell contains three orbitals, and again, since orbitals can hold up to two electrons each, that means a P subshell can hold up to six electrons. Then we have the D subshell. Uh, you might start to see a pattern developing here. D subshell can hold, uh, sorry, consists of five orbitals, and that means it can hold up to ten electrons. Uh, finally, in our list, we've got the F subshell. An F subshell consists of seven orbitals, and that means it can hold up to fourteen electrons. Uh, don't worry about what these letters stand for. They come from strange words like uh, sharp and diffuse and things like that. But uh, you do need to remember this little list of four. And it kind of helps to remember them in that order, S, P, D, F, because that way you can remember S has one orbital and then it goes up in steps of two. So one, three, five, seven orbitals. And then if you remember that each orbital holds up to two electrons, you can remember how many electrons can fit into each type of subshell. You might find your own way of remembering SPDF in that order. I've heard somebody suggest student parties damaged furniture. Uh, might be true. Uh, but you probably find your own way of remembering this. We'll move on up a level now and look at shells, which is kind of where we started with our GCSE knowledge. And what we'll see is that the subshells can form shells. And the different shells have a different set of subshells in them. Start with the first shell. Now the first shell has just an S subshell. Uh, if you remember we said that you could fit up to two electrons in an S subshell, so it has just one orbital, and that means therefore that we can fit up to two electrons in the first shell. The second shell, 
slightly different, has an S and a P subshell. Uh, two electrons go into an S subshell and up to six into a P subshell, so that's going to give us up to eight electrons that we can fit into the second shell. The third shell has S, P, and D subshells, so we're kind of gaining one subshell at a time as we work up through the shells. And now we can fit two electrons in any S subshell, six into any P subshell, and ten into any D subshell, so that gives us a grand total of 18. Finally, the fourth shell uh, has the S, P, D, and now F as well. And so with a further 14 electrons fitting into an S subshell, that gives us an impressive grand total of 32 electrons that can fit into the fourth shell, and the shells beyond that, uh, actually. But we don't really need to consider those very much. So you can see that as we go through the shells, we're adding one extra subshell each time.